a federal court has ruled that Google must divulge the viewing habits of every user who's ever watched a video on YouTube. And that's a little embarrassing for me, because now everyone's going to know how many times I've watched Dramatic Chipmunk. <laughs> Hello, it's Thursday, July 3rd, 2008. I'm John Paczkowski, and this is Digital Daily. Well, so much for privacy on YouTube. The federal judge presiding over Viacom's billion-dollar copyright infringement lawsuit against Google and YouTube has ruled that the pair must provide Viacom with YouTube's logging database. That database includes the login ID and IP address of each and every person who has ever watched a video on YouTube. It also includes the videos they watched and the times that they watched them. Why does Viacom need that kind of information? Why does Google need it? What was it that son Scott McNeely once said? You have no privacy? Get over it? Get over it. Microsoft is moving desktop computing to the cloud. But if you want to come along for the ride, you've got to change planes at Circuit City. Tuesday afternoon, Microsoft officially announced Equipped, a package of low-end productivity software and hosted services. Essentially a subscription version of Microsoft Office, Equipped includes the latest versions of Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and OneNote, as well as Office Live Workspace, Windows Live OneCare, and an assortment of Windows Live tools. The price? $69.99 per year. But you've got to make a trip to Circuit City to get it. Way to pick a financially stable partner, guys. A trip to the local big box retailer? It's an interesting way to transition software users from a purchase to own model to a subscription based one. And again, $200 or more of worth of software for 70 bucks is a pretty compelling proposition, assuming you're not already using OpenOffice and NeoOffice, which are, you know, free. Apple is to the NAND flash memory business what Starbucks is to the coffee business, a market maker and mover, particularly a mover. The company first shook up the NAND market back in 2005 when it arranged to purchase up to 40% of Samsung Electronics holiday NAND output for its iPods. And now it's creating a bit of a stir again, this time thanks to the iPhone. Apple plans to buy 50 million 8 gigabyte equivalent NAND chips from Samsung. That's an awful lot of NAND. So much, in fact, that the chip manufacturer has been forced to reduce its supply to other customers to fulfill its obligation to Apple. It's ugly news for any Samsung customer not headquartered in Cupertino. That said, the deal's impact on the NAND market could be a reduction in prices for all. Something to look forward to after the drought, I suppose. That's it for Digital Daily. Thanks for watching. Enjoy your holiday, and I will see you again next Monday.